In this video, let's talk about how we can use x and y intercepts to easily graph a line. You remember back when we were using an x-y table, what we would do is we would pick a bunch of x values, we'd find the y values that went with those particular x values, and that would give us some ordered pairs that were on our line. And when you plotted all these points, they would line up in a straight line, and then we would connect the dots between these points and then that would give us the graph of that linear equation. And that was pretty time consuming. It, it took a lot of time to do that. But let's, let's think about this for a minute. As we were finding these points, like in, in this example here, I've plotted about five points or so, but what's the absolute minimum number of points I would need? If we were, if we were gonna be as lazy as we could be, what's the fewest number of points we would need in order to uniquely identify a line? I don't think we would need five because even if we didn't do the fifth one, the other four would clearly tell us where our line is. I don't even think we would need four. For that matter, I don't even think we would need three. Really just two points should uniquely identify a line. Well, what this is gonna do with intercepts is we're gonna take that even a step farther. Not only are we gonna find just two points, but we're also gonna try to find the easiest two points that we can. And so if we re, you know, redo this example here, if you were gonna think of it like an XY table, really what you'd be doing is setting the X equal to zero to find the Y intercept to see where it crosses the Y axis. And then for another point, you'd set the Y equal to zero to find the X intercept. And you'd find where it crosses the X axis. Then we would connect these dots and then uh, there would still be your line, but it's going to be a lot faster than picking five or six points in a full XY table. Um, and even having zero in for X or Y will actually make a lot of the variables go away when you plug in zero. So even the math turns out to be easier as well. So it's really a faster way to graph using intercepts than it was using the full XY table. So here's some steps. To graph lines using intercepts, step one is we're going to find and plot both of the intercepts. I'm going to assume you already know how to do that. If you're a little shaky on finding intercepts or not sure what to do, we have a video that um, was right before this one that you can watch that will talk about how to find X and Y intercepts. Now number two is not absolutely necessary, but we'll just say it's highly recommended. Technically, you really only need two points. You don't need a third point. But if you were to make an algebra mistake along the way, see that that's one of the benefits of having so many points in your XY table is if you messed up on one point, the other four or five, you'd easily recognize that you made a mistake. But here, if you make a, a mistake on one of the intercepts, the whole problem's gonna be wrong and you won't realize that it's incorrect. So we're gonna find and plot one additional point. Now, what, what does that mean exactly? Well, this is what we call a test point. It's not necessary, but it's a good idea, especially for a test. And, and here's what it looks like. Um, you go through, you do your math, you find your x-intercept, you find your y-intercept, and then choose just any, just any other x value other than where these two points are. So it could be uh, here or here, or here, or here, it doesn't matter where, find this corresponding y value, and that point should be on that line if done correctly. And so this just lets you confirm the fact that you're doing everything correct. And then when you connect your dots, not only is it going through your two intercepts, but it's also going through your test point and you can be confident in your answer. Uh, the last step is simply to draw a line through all your points, your intercepts and your test point. All right, so let's close out this video with an example. Let's say we're trying to graph y equals one third x minus two. And let's, let's not do this the way we've been doing them recently with the big x, y table. Let's, uh, let's instead try to find intercepts. So for the x intercept, we, we know that we should let the y equal zero and then find the x that corresponds to y being zero. So we'll let y be zero and then we'll solve for x. 
So I think we'd add two to the left hand side, two equals one third x. And then we'll solve for x by multiplying by three. If this is one third, then we'll multiply by three on the right and times three on the left. Three times one third will cancel. And so we'll get x equals three times two, which is six. So the x-intercept is at six comma zero. Let's, we'll, we'll circle this, we'll keep that in the back of our mind. All right, uh, next let's do the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, we're gonna let the x-coordinate be zero. So we'll have y equals one-third times zero minus two, which is obviously negative two. So the y-intercept is at zero comma negative two. All right, so we have our x-intercept, we have our y-intercept. Up here, I will squeeze in a quick little graph. Let's make that a white line. Okay, and here's the x-axis. And I'm just gonna give a ballpark sketch of the graph, nothing too fancy. The x-intercept is at one, two, three, four, five, six. And the y-intercept is at negative one, two. So it looks like this is a pretty flat line. It probably looks something kind of like this. Oh, that's not really very good. Let me try that again. There, that's better. Okay. So this is the graph of this linear equation. You notice how much faster that was uh, than using an xy table. Now, one thing that we forgot to do was we found our intercepts and we're pretty sure that's right because the algebra wasn't too terrible, but who's to say I didn't make a small mistake with you know a plus or a minus, or let's just be on the safe side. Let's pick uh, one additional point. So here's, here's how we do a test point. I'll do this in pink. Okay, for a test point, you can do this either, I probably should have done this before I did the graph, but it's okay, we'll do it after the graph, after we've done the graph. We're gonna choose just any x value. Just don't let it be six and don't let it be zero, but anybody else would be fine. A smart idea looking at the equation is it'd probably be a good idea if it was a multiple of three, since we're multiplying x times a third, and so if x is a multiple of three, the factor of three will cancel. Um, if I chose x to be one or two, that's okay, but I'm, I need to expect to have fractions in my answer. But you know, why deal with fractions if we don't have to? So I think I'm gonna let my x value be three, and let's see what y value that corresponds to. One third times three would be one. One minus two is negative one negative one. So let me cross my fingers and hope that winds up on my yellow line. If it's on my line, then I'm convinced that we've done everything correctly. If it's not, then, then we're in trouble and we need to go back and see where we made a mistake. But one, two, three, comma, negative one is right here and it's perfectly on the line where it should be. Your two intercepts and your test point should all line up in a straight line. Now, hypothetically, Let's say we made a mistake and maybe one of these points was here you know, or something like that. Well, that doesn't make a straight line. And so either my test point or my X or Y intercept would be incorrect. And so that, that's what the test point is, is it's a, it's a fail safe. It's a, uh, a thing that makes sure that you're doing the problem correctly and that you're getting the right answer. So anyways, um, hopefully this example here helps you better understand how we graph lines using intercepts.